The second component of the field work leads us to the economic target group itself. Within their own economic environment, local producers are invited to join a PACA mini workshop to assess together with local government departments and other supporting institutions the strengths and weaknesses of their respective cluster. The meta plan technique allows local stakeholders to express their ideas freely and motivate them to engage into discussions about sector specific problems and try to find solutions to increase their competitiveness. Since a special concern is to identify possibilities to raise the competitive advantage of the locality, the flow of the meta plan interaction is supported by additional methods which are based on studies by Professor Michael E. Porter, including the Five Forces and the Diamond Model. The Diamond Model enables local facilitators to reveal aspirations of participants and process their answers within the four different dimensions of an economic environment, including the strengths and weaknesses of their business sector, the supporting institutions, the supporting industries, and the demand conditions. Porter's Five Forces, on the other hand, takes a closer look at one homogeneous sector and analyzes its competitiveness related to five different factors. These so-called forces include the state of existing sector-specific competition, the threat of new competitors, the bargaining power of suppliers, the threat of substitute products, as well as the bargaining power of buyers. These analytic tools, combined with the participatory meta-plan technique, illustrates to the participants that competitiveness is not a one-dimensional problem, but rather depends on the specific combination of interdependent forces. After the fieldwork is completed, the PACA team set out to analyze the entire findings from the interviews, workshops and direct observations within a diagnostic workshop. Guided by the framework of Porter's Diamond and Five Forces, the strengths and weaknesses of the selected production centers are analyzed and converted into concrete proposals. These action-oriented proposals and recommendations are then presented to the public during the final presentation event, where all stakeholders have a chance to give their feedback and jointly refine them with the PACA facilitators. In the final stage, the so-called Way Forward workshop, representatives of the selected clusters form working groups to discuss the proposals in further detail and formulate concrete action plans, including the questions First, who will take the responsibility for the implementation process? Second, which stakeholders are going to be involved? And third, where to obtain the necessary financial resources. In conclusion, the first Indonesian PACA exercise in Boyulali, Bima and Dompu was successful in stimulating interaction and cooperation among local key stakeholders. It achieved to increase the communication between the private and public sector and motivate them to jointly discuss and analyze the major problems of their region. Nevertheless, it is clear that due to its rapid appraisal approach, PACA is not able to provide comprehensive analysis and final solutions to all questions of the selected sectors within the three districts. In fact, the success of PACA strongly depends on local economic actors and their commitment. The major challenge is to sustain the beneficial dynamics among the key economic actors and to find mechanisms to secure the implementation and monitoring of the sector-specific action plans. From our side, we are looking forward to continuing the initiated PACA process 
and master upcoming challenges together.